Isn't it great? And of course, you know that whenever you play the video, there's no sound of anybody saying that. It's just us reacting to this phantom voice saying it's being recorded, even though I've learned over, oh, nice. <laughs> over the last <laughs> months that you can hear the sound saying that it's not there. Okay. So it's All not right. just you being recorded, it's the whole screen? Yeah. The whole, oh, good the whole to know. Screen. You guys are being recorded. You guys are being recorded. So no, no pressure or anything. So be on your best behavior. No, no chewing with your mouth open or whatever it is. <laughs> when I go to share screen, you can sneak off or whatever you want to do. Okay, so welcome to Susan's class of organizational tips at for genealogy research. Hi, everybody out there in Wonderland watching all four of you. <laughs> so, um, I kind of put this together of some of the different things I've done now, just letting you know, I do not have the answer to all these things. This is just how I do it. And some of the tips that I've come up with, because I've been watching a lot of the videos on tips on how to do things on ancestry and, and newspapers.com. And so I thought I'd, I'd come up with a few things. So um, because I'm recording this, it'll make it easier for other people to stop and pause and, and see, um, see what I talked about. So one of the things I found was I was watching a video on Canadian ancest ancestry and I didn't, it just was like the next thing in the playlist. I wasn't really interested in Canadian uh, genealogy, but he was actually from Niagara Falls. And so he was talking about how, how uh, his family history, how his family has gone in and improved uh, the community and how his great grandfather or his grandfather built uh, worked, had a construction company and they had these photos of him standing in front of these tractors and then he discovered that the town names of the streets were named after different family members but women's first names so he was able to learn all that because he went and he interviewed one of one of the old people in the family who said yeah that name that's your your aunt uh Tammy and that one that's your aunt Cindy and whatever and so he was able to pull out a map and get that history and understand that now she could have been making it up I don't know but anyway so he, he was, oh yeah that street out there Catalina that's actually no <laughs> I don't know so that's what they said is that he was talking about this family history and he said this thing he says I'm interested in dash genealogy and I and he started talking and I thought wait, what did you just say, dash genealogy? And I thought, I've never heard of dash genealogy. Have you guys heard of dash genealogy? No. So what it was, is he explained, is that on a tombstone, you have a year and you have a year for birth and death. And then there's a dash in the middle. He says, so what he's interested in is what's in the middle, that whole thing called life, you know, the, the part in between. And I thought, oh, I am too. That's social history. I really am interested in social history. And so I kind of thought, I wish I had a better name than Dash, but I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I, I'm really interested in that. So the things I'm going to teach you today are kind of more Dash and then organizational stuff. So the first thing I wanted to show you was newspapers.com. And we've talked about newspapers.com. So I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on this, but let me share the screen so that you can. So I have um, a little bit of, um, so you can see the visuals. So one of the things I was thinking about, here's newspapers.com. And I have a subscription to it because of the Wikipedia group uh, that I'm a Wikipedia editor. But, um, you know, you can pay for this if you're buying ancestry.com premium or something like that. But I watched a video on newspapers.com because I think that the interface is a little wiggly. It's kind of hard to, to really use it in some places. So I wanted to get more of the nuances of it. And this woman was explaining the newspapers.com. Oh, look, I have Publishers Extra. I didn't know I had that. Um, she was explaining this because uh, newspapers.com was about to be free for a week for people who uh, signed in using a special link. So she was she was putting out this video saying, hey, when you start to use your ancestry.com, uh, make sure that you use the link that is available for genealogy people for a free week, not the free link that is here. See how it says free access, uh, start a free trial. She says, don't use that because if you use that, then you're giving up your free week. Use the link that they, that you will get in a genealogy, um, you know, site who says, hey, yeah, newspapers.com is free for a week. 
So she, so I thought that was a nice tip because I would have probably not even known any better and just tried the free trial. So when you, when, when you think you want to use newspapers.com for genealogical research, I think that you should go back to your, um, uh, your notes somewhere and keep track when you think that you need to use your newspapers.com, just like we were talking about, put a, put a tag on the page when you think that you're going to be going, you need to go to the family history center or something. So you would make a custom tag that says, um, maybe you would customize it saying, um, check news, newspapers.com or something like that. And then you would make that tag and you could put it on somebody so that when there is a free link, like there's a free um, time for you to be able to get into newspapers.com, you make better use of the time you have because you've got a week. So this is one of the tips that I wanted to give is that make sure you, you have could, that. You could sort by that and bring up all the people you wanted. To all the people that you mean to, when I finally get time to get into newspapers.com, I want to make sure I hit all these people. And so same thing, like when, when the, the pandemic, we can get into the Family History Center, you can make a note saying, all these people are on top of my list whenever I can finally get to a Family History Center. I want to make sure I take care of this. Because this way you can move, just move on to whatever else you're working on just by putting yourself a note so that you'll be able to find it back later. I liked that idea. The other thing was to really use your notes. Now, if you use Ancestry and you create your notes on here, that's wonderful. But there's other ways of creating notes by putting them on your um, a spreadsheet, like I'm going to show in a minute. But I would try to get yourself in a habit. I'm going to. I'm planning on keeping Ancestry for the foreseeable future. This is where I think I'm going to keep collecting my information, plus making a copy on my desktop, you know, onto a hard drive. But I think this is, I like this interface. I think it's, it's a little expensive, but I think I can make it work because I'm using it so often. So I think that I'm gonna just keep putting tags and notes and stuff in here, uh, notes to myself as I go. And I think that, that whatever, whatever system you use, just use it consistently. And the way I was thinking about it is we're doing this genealogy right now for ourselves, but you know, something may happen where we need to, somebody else comes along and says, I want to take over where you left off. And then they can get, you know, into your account and look at the things that you've been able to do. And you really want to leave those notes so that it's whoever was to pick it up would probably understand where you were last and what you were looking at, what you had success with, what was just, you know, I've searched forever and I can't find this and possibly it's under this other random name. So leave the information not only for future people who might be picking up where you left off, but also for yourself, because in five years, <laughs> who knows where, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna remember why I said what I said. So with newspapers.com, it's also important, and, and all the things I'm gonna talk about today is to understand what is this item. And newspapers, remember, were you know, pretty much Facebook of the time. So they were trying to sell papers, they were trying to get advertisements. And the best way to get advertisements is to have content in there that the people in the local area want to, want to see. So, I mean, you know, if you wanted to hear about Grover Cleveland visiting, you know, a, a city five, you know, five miles away or Grover Cleveland's inauguration to office or something like that, you, you could go to a better or bigger newspaper but what you want them to buy your local paper. So instead of having a lot of content about whatever's happening in the presidential world, they're gonna to try to put more information about what's happening locally. Because, I mean, I remember whenever they, we had the, Mary, we had the Kitty Caper Parade here in town. And I, I remember it since I was a little girl. Were you in it too, Tamberly? I For my kids, yeah. We, I remember we had a float in the Olympic year with all the kids in the neighborhood, we made an Olympic float. And so they used to come out with a picture section of all the kids in the parade. And so parents bought that paper that day because their kid's picture was in it. So I have, it was, a, picture of, I have a picture of my husband in that parade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. All about it, yeah. See? <laughs> That's yeah. what I mean. So that, yeah. you know, you might not have been a local that bought the paper normally, but you damn well bought that yeah. paper. So the newspapers.com 
is constantly uploading new um, papers. And you can see her, it's 625, what is that, a million? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of pages. So there's 625 million that's constantly being updated. So I think there's going to be a lot more information that's on this newspaper that we're not even really aware of. And we don't know to search for because who knew? So when I was looking at the <clears throat> uh, videos about newspaper.com, one of the tips that uh, one of the women said is that remember that newspapers are print. Oh, here comes Cindy. Hi, Cindy. I can't see, I can't hear. Cindy, oh, there she is. Let her know she's being filmed. I think it'll be, I think it'll auto tell her. We'll see. Tamber, are you there? I am. No. <laughs> I'm here, Cindy. Okay, great. Okay, Cindy, we're recording. Like I said, we were going. Yeah, to... I saw that. Okay. Great. I, it told me that. Okay. okay. So Hello, we're, everybody. We're kind of at the beginning. So, okay, no problem. I'll can... catch up mentally. So we're talking about newspapers.com at the moment. Okay. So uh, what I was saying is that if you understand the reason why the archive exists, it might help you do better searching. So newspapers being print have a less amount of space. So when you're searching for something on newspapers.com, the suggestion was to really do a thorough job of searching for all the combinations that you might, uh, that might exist. And I think that it's a good idea to write it down on a piece of paper, maybe in front of you, so you don't skip something. So like, let's say you've got, like in my case, uh, maybe I'm looking for my dad, who's Anthony Gerbic, which is like a hundred of them, but I'm going to look for Anthony Gerbic. I'm going to look for Tony Gerbic. I'm going to look for A. Dot Gerbic. I'm going to look for T. Dot Gerbic. I'm going to look for Gerbic, comma T, Gerbic, comma A. Period, and so on, because because they're really condensing for space. It could be in any of those combinations. So I might try with Gerbic first because obviously that's an unusual last name and it might narrow it down. But in some cases, you're going to find situations where you can't narrow it down to a, a name like Gerbic. You know, you're using something else. So if you write a little list of all the things that you want to, the search terms you want to look through on a piece of paper in front of you, then when you're when you're going, you can you can. Um, try to make sure you go through all those those uh, tips because you may go through different newspapers and multiple searches. The other tip they said is that when you're searching for a woman, remember that she could also be using Mrs. Anthony Gerbic or, you know, MRS period, you know, um, A. Gerbic or A. J. Gerbic or all kinds of combinations, or she could, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be her first name. So depending on the time period you're looking for, you may have to look in that way. Also look for nicknames. So um, the example given in the video is watching, she found out that her uncle she was searching for was known as like Dutch. And that was a name she'd never heard him called Dutch and he was a police officer. And so when she found out that he was known as Dutch, she put in the search engine Dutch and then the last name and things started coming up like crazy. So in the newspaper, that's what his nickname was. So as I said up here in the corner where it shows that there's a lot of newspapers being added all the time, there's still a lot of newspapers that aren't existing. So when I was talking about making notes on, a, on an account and I was saying, take really good notes, you might make yourself, let's say you had a really good search for this Anton John Gerbic make notes of what the search terms you were that you used and put a date that you search for those terms and then walk away you know you didn't find anything walk away and then remember how i said put this filter maybe check newspapers.com whenever it's available for free or you have a free trial membership you can really just zoom in on it for that week then maybe leave this maybe leave the filter on there again and when two years come by or three years come by, you might sit down and try another search again, get another free trial membership and do another search because they're always adding new newspapers. 
And in some areas, they're using newspapers that are not English speaking languages. And remember, I found a whole bunch of stuff. Well, not a whole bunch. I found like a couple things that were in Slovenian in a Slovenian paper. So it wasn't something that I normally would have would have pulled up right away. So for newspapers.com, um, there's all kinds of things that you might find that you will pull up. Let me, let me see, uh, just a couple small things that I found on, um, in my family that I didn't know existed. So this is kind of a hodgepodge of, of information. Let me give you, let me screen share again. Let's like pull this back up. So I, there was this rumor that my, my family's house had been hit by a car and my when my grandmother was there and I didn't know anything about it it was you know before I was ever born or anything like that so it took me a while but I did manage to find I managed to find the newspaper that had uh, the headlines and so on and then there's a the second page wrecked by auto and it explains a lot and there's better photos and things like this so one of my goals is to to find this in newspapers.com and then make one page, you know, cut it, crop it. So it's one page instead of, I have it on two pages because I scanned in a newspaper that I have, um, that was a family thing that I found in my dad's archives somewhere, you know. So I wanna, I wanna try to get that scanned correctly so that it's all there and it's clearer. But I can, what I can do is if I didn't have a newspapers.com account, again, I could go over and I can make a notation on the notes and put a little flag saying newspapers.com. So I know that the next time I have that free membership, I should probably make sure I try to get that newspaper article in, in good quality as um, compared to what I had before. So that was that part of the newspapers thing I was gonna explain. Let me make sure I got everything. Um, some of the other things I can remember pulling up, I remember Proposition 13, that was a California thing, so Mary probably doesn't remember it. But I can remember when I was in high school, it was a big deal because we were told we were gonna lose a lot of our school programs and art classes, music classes. And my parents were like, I want Proposition 13 because I'm sick of paying these super high rates. So I remember that there was a, I think we paid like $5, all these students, and we got our name in the paper for, um, saying we didn't want Proposition 13. And I remember my parents putting and buying and uh, being part of a giant ad that said they wanted Proposition 13. So someday I'd like to find that newspaper and see the two different combinations of how my parents and I were like, no. Another article I pulled up, I think from Mark uh, Mark's genealogy when I was glancing around newspapers.com, I found his his ancestors had had also been on a petition and it's just like a it's like a thousand names and there's just this really little tiny thing in there with their name on it but it was for I believe it was for statehood they didn't think that the state should become a state so I thought oh well that's that's interesting you know it's more than just signing a petition now we know how how they felt on a political issue so I I that kind of thing you can find but you wouldn't know to look for it until you just kind of just spend some time searching through it so I'm saying use your time wisely when you have um, the chance to get into one of these, these sites. And so the, to do that, plan ahead and, and make notations and notes so that you just go right for it, not falling into a rabbit hole that you can't, that you know, your, your week runs out and you realized I didn't do it for what I thought I was. Um, another thing that I found on newspapers.com would be interesting is just to know what was happening in the community, because you have that push and pull effect uh, in immigration and knowing that people are pushed out of countries or states in some cases, and some people are pulled in by people are saying, oh, no, housing prices are really good here. They're putting up a new um, um, area to buy a home. You know, I've already bought my home. Why didn't you come join us? And, you know, that kind of thing. That's that pull effect. Whereas in some kind, some states or some cities, the there's a push of people being saying, um, you know, maybe the weather's awful. Maybe there's a natural disaster. Maybe jobs are really having problems. So if you look at the newspapers around the time that your family lived there, remember you're reading a newspaper they probably read. And then see if you see any of those factors of why somebody would, be pushed or pulled out of a community. And it, you know, you never know, but at least it gives you a feeling of knowing more about your family's 
uh, reasons for doing the things that they do. So let me see, I was gonna go to something else. As I said, I was gonna go through these kind of fast. Okay, when I first started doing genealogy before I had um, the internet, and this is years ago, I learned about um, the SS5, the Social Security Death Index. And so that was one of the only tricks that I ever learned. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the SS5. Well, I, I have. Have, has, of course, but um, so this can be really useful or it could be just like, I will never use this my, in my life, but it's for more people who have recent family members. Because remember, again, keeping in mind, why are these documents created? Why do we have them? So in 1936 and possibly in 35, people were applying for this new program called social security. And so people were getting social security numbers. And so what they had to do is they had to apply with a to fill out an application to get their social security number so that eventually they'd be able to get money from the government as you know what the benefits are for having a social security card so we didn't have so there was this huge program of getting people to to fill out these applications and on the applications it would say not only the person's name and their birthday and um where they lived at the time but it also asked for your uh parents' names, your mother's maiden name, and your um, place of origin. So in some cases, this might be helpful for people like myself, who I didn't know a lot about maybe somebody's maiden name or how it was spelled, because remember, it's written in about 1936 by the person who's filling it out. So it's in their handwriting. So likely, you're going to get correct information and correct spelling I hope, <laughs> depending on who the person was who filled it out. So I'm gonna show you how to find the SS5 form and what it looks like. So if you're interested in doing it, you can find it yourselves. Okay, let me get over here to the, to the screen. I've got so many screens open, hold on a second. This is, this is one of the few downsides of having multiple screens is that everything just keeps, just hides behind things. Okay, so what you would do is um, Ancestry has it, and if, Apparently Ancestry has a really good way of finding it, but I think Family History also has the SS5. But um, this is how they showed me on the video. Remember, I don't know everything. I'm just repeating what I've, what I've heard. So you go over to the search and you go to the card catalog. And remember I'm videotaping this so you can go back and figure this out later. So what you're looking for is you go to the keyword search and you're gonna type in um, social security death index. So SSDI and hit search. And you're gonna come up with these two different areas. And I'm, I apologize, you can't read it really, really well, but um, um, you've got the social security applications and claims index, which is from 1936 to 2007, or you have the, nine, the social security death index, which is 35 to 2014. She suggested you always go to the death index first. And I can't remember what the differences were, but. Uh, one is, I think, the application, and one is the actual index. She said to check both. Always look at both. And so I'm going to go over here to the death index so you can see what's here. And you can put in the information you know. You don't have to put in a lot of different information. I'm going to just put in Gerbic because I thought this was interesting how it pulled up because my name is very un unusual, obviously. So it pulls up only so many Gerbics. And this is kind of a clever way of finding my Gerbics. I think I know who almost all of these are. And then all, all these people down here at the bottom that have names that are similar. And this is a nice list of where they're from, birth and death dates. And you can click on the view record. So I'm going to go to my father, which is down here, Anthony J. Gerbic. And I click on view record. And it gives me that little index where it has um, his social security number his birth, uh, when it was issued, where he was from, his last known residence, when he, I guess when he filled out the card or when he died. I think it's when, he, when died. he died, yeah. And the death date. So that might give you a little information that you didn't have before, but um, without looking at the document, you really can't know for sure. And she suggested always go back to the primary source. And I think that's is something Cindy tells us all the time because this indexing is helpful, but it isn't necessarily everything you need. So you might want to order the form. Now, she said, if you go all the way down to the bottom, there is some instructions on how to order it. 
um, request copy of original application. Now these are not cheap. You can fill out the form online, but uh, according to the video I was looking at yesterday, they're $27 a piece. So you wanna make sure that the person you're looking for is somebody that you really hope you're sure is an ancestor that is when you're looking for it. Because back in the day when I was doing genealogy without the internet, I ordered like, you know, 10 different SS5s that didn't even end up belonging to me. And I get it and the name is misspelled and it wasn't even a family member. And that was, and it was weeks because you had to mail them a, a, a form with a check. And then, you know, someday five weeks or more, you would get the, the application back. Oh, so, but the anticipation was wonderful. <laughs> when it came in the yeah, book. I was thinking, $27? Oh my God. I think it was like $16 and it was never cheap. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it was just a lot of money. And so I'm going to show you what an SS5 looks like whenever I... Uh, when well, I wait, Susan, that. if you yeah. go back to the other choice, you pick the death index. Doesn't the other choice have the SS5? Uh, it didn't in my parents' case. Let me go back and I will see. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong about that. I had a long time it's since like, I've done this. Go back one more. When you, yeah, okay, what's so the other the one? First now? one I looked at was death index. Right, that's where we were. But now go to the other one, because that's the application. Well, go to the other. Input. Okay, here it is. So here they are, and there is. Oh, look at this one. Here's a Yugoslavia. Oh, I haven't seen. There's an Anthony Gerbic from Kanyak, Yugoslavia. Uh, let me find my. See if I see my dad because I want to be consistent. Oh, I don't see my dad. Dad. Oh, there he is. No, that's not him. Oh, there he is. View record. And it didn't pull it up. And it didn't pull it up, no. the image. Maybe it does in some cases, but I think yeah, it's no like image. Okay. bucks. So <laughs> Wait, so, is that the same? That's the same. Wasn't that the same one you just looked at? No. No, a different one. Okay. Yeah, the first one I looked at was death index, and the one I'm looking at now is uh, Social Security application. application. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you what one of these looks like because I have one scanned. I have a couple scanned. Let me pull them up really quick. Oh my gosh, I closed this out and I didn't mean to close it out. What a what a dork. That's okay. I'm going to We love you anyway. <laughs> Even without cookies. <laughs> let me go over to the let me go over. Yeah, I just had it and then I clicked off of it and I closed the darn thing. I have it, I have it on my computer, all the little things I want to show you. Just the things I want to show you, and none of the things that will be distracting. And it is. And your hair looks amazing, Sydney, but we can see of it because I know you just said <laughs> Yeah, well, curls. Curlies. Curly, the longer it's getting, the curlier it's getting. Okay, here's, here's what I was looking for. Let me see. I think I have, do I have two of these here? Let me see if I do. Let me go over to screen share again. So this is my father's SS5, and I'm going to blow it up because I think I can do that easy. So this is written by his own hand, which was always nice to see their handwriting. Look at that. It, he uses Tony as his first name. Yeah. Interesting, huh? So here it is. Uh, it has a social security number on here. And I also should tell you, when you die, you lose your privacy rights in a lot of cases. So um, social security numbers become available and all kinds of things become available. So um, assuming that it's it's gonna stay private isn't necessarily so. Isn't because that a different spelling of his mother's maiden name too? That's what I was Kinda, wondering. Yeah, it yeah. sure is, which scares me, but. <laughs> well, no, it gives you another thing to be looking for. Her, another Chris. thing, yeah, Scoops guy. And here's his signature, Tony John Gerbic, which I, I've never really seen him call this. He was, they filled this out in 1939, February 3rd, 1939. Um, you can see uh, where his birthday, and there was a lot of talk about my dad's birthday. Some people said he was born in 1918. He didn't even really know. Um, and in fact, he has 1919 here. And I think it's always been, no, no, it is 1919. The problem I think was that was confusing is my dad, his, his mom had a baby born in 1918 mm -hmm. and they named that baby Anton. Oh, and that baby died after a few months. And then my dad was born the next year and they named that baby Anthony. So I think that my dad got confused with the story that there that his birth date was 1918. Anyway, that's how it's taken. So here's his dad's name and here's his mom's name where my dad was living. My dad was unemployed. 
and just really interesting. So these, if you can pull the original, you might actually find something that is uh, applicable. Maybe it'll have something in here in the in the employment thing or where they live. Now keep in yeah, mind, it's a really weird combination of printing and cursive, isn't it? Yeah. When I first looked at it, I thought somebody else must have added Ohio because he probably just put Cleveland, but then he signed his name in cursive and he does his first name in cursive and then his middle and last name in printing. That's just really, and then street is in cursive. Well, in Ohio is written and printed. Yeah, it's really interesting yeah. just looking at the document. And so I think it's really neat to have something in somebody's handwriting. Yeah, I, I scanned a whole, I scanned everything my parents had, and I saved things with just a scrap of paper with somebody's phone number on it, just because I liked looking at the handwriting. And I thought, I don't know, maybe someday it'll it'll be an art project, and I'll make a collage of. I don't know. I just thought it was neat. Is that so, his cursive, Susan? Yeah, that's him. Know? That's how he made his G's. Wow. Yep, Great. that's him. But I never saw him use the name. Tony really officially because guess what happens in 1954 there comes Deirdre in 1956 actually my brother is born and he's a Anthony of course so of course yeah so I thought it was really neat so that's probably when my dad kind of stopped using Tony and started using Anthony more formally because now he has a Tony in the family that's oh. so that might be why Hi, Deirdre. Tony is what you use when you're the kid and then you go to Anthony when you're Hello. the adult. Huh. Yeah. Oh, another one with a new haircut. Check these people out. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I got to put my hair up. Yeah, mine was just trimmed, that's all. And then I put water <laughs> yeah, on it. got a whole new style. Deirdre, I think the thing told you you were being recorded, right? Yeah. Was that you? I mean, yeah. okay. I'm recording this whole section. And so you'll be able to go back and look and stop. If oh, you that's can. right. Um, and you, do you want to change your name on your screen? <coughs> what it does, does it say mariah is mariah oh they call the wind mariah oh great uh you go to the upper right hand corner of your yeah screen. how do i change it there's three little dots uh wait. A blue, if you mouse up at the top oh yeah yeah click on that <coughs> oh rename got it okay call yourself princess princess of the universe <laughs> yeah you could do that too <laughs> and we're recording who knows well we can do whatever we want we're adults the reason it said mariah o'grady is because we recorded thanks to your insistence you know or motivation <laughs> <all speeches. laughs> uh my parents so interesting yeah Oh, cool. oh, fantastic, because that's one of the things I was going to mention, too, because I'm a nag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, of course, what happened, though, so um, she recorded them, archived them, and then emailed them, you know, to the siblings and grandchildren, and and then they had more questions. So well, then you'll have, have to continue. Part two. I have a feeling this pandemic's going to last a lot longer. Uh, <laughs> Dear Abby today or yesterday, they had a woman who's, whose mother's in her 80s. Her husband has died. And now her mother, I don't know if you guys read this or not, but now the mother, the, the child who's writing to Dear Abby says, I want to interview my mom. I want to get her voice on audio. I want to, I want to have her tell stories, but my mom doesn't want to do it because she never, she hates having her picture taken. And she, I told, she asked me, why do I want to do this? And I told her, because when you die, I want to be able to listen to your voice. And so Dear Abby's like, you don't tell somebody I want <laughs> to record you because when you're dead. I mean, after your husband's already died and you're in your yeah. 80s, that is not tactful. <laughs> so, so, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't your Abby. It was uh, Carolyn Hacks. Uh, she uh, writes the Washington Post. I, 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 I love follow a lot of these different things. And so people were writing in tactfully how to have said it. Like, yeah, maybe have the grandchildren ask and record it. And then you have the grandchildren talking to the grandmother. Or also you could take pictures, old pictures. You can say, Grandma, look at this old picture. Can you tell me who's in it and the story behind it? And that's oh, a really that natural good. way of getting him to, to explain the picture. And then the story, who knows where it'll go? Because it could be 
I don't know. I wish I did more. I only had so many. I kept thinking I'd have more time, but I didn't. I'm glad I got what I did. But anyway, so um, going back to, okay, we've done SS5s. We've done newspapers.com. And Deirdre, you'll be able to listen to it later. Oh, thank goodness, because you guys have covered a lot. <laughs> okay, let me go to where I was going to go to next. Um, and I also mentioned again, ancestry notes, flags, tags, and dash. Um, immigration. Now this, I'm just, I'm not going to show you a screen on this, but one of the things that the, that she, another woman was talking about when you're, when you're trying to find. Ex excuse uh, me. Did, did Mary go away? Or no, she's right here. She's I don't see her picture on my. It's just very quiet. No, I'm here. I just, my, my husband's cooking. So I put it on mute. So it's not. Oh, so well, it's not that. It's just like your picture isn't one of my. On well, my... Are you on gallery? See her. No, I'm I'm looking at you, and then we'll the, go to gallery, and then there's a strip. Yeah, <laughs> so she just probably fell off the strip. <laughs> Come on, Mary, strip. <laughs> you fell off the strip, Mary. <laughs> so go to go to gallery view, and then you can see all five. Okay. No, time. I saw her. she flips up when she's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall off the strip, Mary. <laughs> I just I just noticed that. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, continue. You're doing a great job. <laughs> okay, so I'm just making this all up as I go. All right, so um, immigration. So she she said this another suggestion of a video on tips I was watching. So you know how you're looking at these passenger lists of people coming into a country, and it's just page after page after page, and you just get so con freaking confused. One of the suggestions she had is when you're doing the search try she says she always narrows in and goes for the very very most detail first so she puts it in with like plus or minus one year you know like so-and-so's name his the birthday blah 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 and then she expands out like adding plus or minus three years plus or minus five years you know asterisks or whatever to to make it so the search gets broader i assume the reason why she's doing this is because you might get lucky on the first try and you've already zeroed in on the person and that way you slowly expand as opposed to starting really broad and then you have to keep going down and narrowing it further to get to the one you want so i think that's what she was trying to say but i'm not psychic so i assume i'm just making that up the other thing she said is if a if a family came over and you're searching for a family always search for the youngest person in the group or the oldest person in the group, like a, if there was a grandparent or something, because when the ships were coming over from these other countries, they're mostly full of people who are about 18 to 25 or 30 years old. So if you're looking for somebody in that age group, mm -hmm. you're just going to get so many hits and so much confusion. But they didn't see a lot of 50 year olds coming over on these ships or one year olds. So if you can that search in that way, it might help you narrow it down faster than to see a flood of 20 year olds or 18 year olds or whatever. That makes total sense. Yeah, so yeah. it's just kind of a time thing and it's not gonna affect all of us. I mean, as far as I know, my family all came over when they were in their 18s or 20s. But in case it does affect you, that, that might be a nice hint. Um, okay, I explained that. Um, Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to make sure I talked about really quick was uh, this idea, and we, we just talked about it really quickly, but looking at my dad's aunt's, um, my dad's files of his um, SS5 that he filled out, that's, that it's, it's written in all kinds of different ways, and um, what I'm really big on is preserving the family history in that I, re I inherited all the family photos, all the family documents, all the family clippings, newspaper clippings of who knows who these people are, and also the letters. So I have tons and tons and tons and tons of letters, and they've all been scanned. And when I scan them, I also scan the uh, envelope. Because not only for the postage stamp, but also it gives dates. It may have information about how it was addressed. And as I said, we're not necessarily doing genealogy for us ourselves. We might know exactly what we're talking about, but the person who's going to inherit what, where you are now may not have a clue what you're talking about. And then also 
I personally think we're going to start losing people who are not able to read cursive. So oh. or it's going to become more difficult. So any letter that's written in cursive, we should probably transcribe. And then also letters fade over time. So if you can scan them and, and make the quality the best possible you can, that would be really helpful to, to preserve those. So I found this letter and I have not read all these letters because there's just tons. And I really mean to sit down and read them all through because there's lots of hints. One letter, um, here's one that my, my uncle Victor sent, let me screen share, uh, to my dad is uh, he sent this letter, Dear Tony, and he talks about different things. P.S. How's the family? Why don't you writing to me say hello to family and here's his address with the <laughs> postmark my mom took the stamp out of it because my mom collected stamps and she took she always ripped stamps out of everything and then he also sent a like a menu of where he was working it says this is the place i work and he put a little line he put a little arrow to westgate in ohio and here's the address and then it's just kind of a thing that was stuck inside the envelope and you know it's charming in, in its own way and so I thought that was kind of fun. So I scanned that to make sure I had that. Another thing that my dad um, um, had was one of the letters they sent had uh, in, the, in the letter my brother said is, oh, did you hear John Gerbic died at the soldier and sailor home? And it didn't have a year, but I was looking for this guy like crazy all over the place. And because my uncle had written that in a letter and I knew what year the letter was written, I knew that it must have been in the last few years. So it allowed me to search down to a soldier and sailor hospital and to find um, kind of a year. And that's how I found my uncle's, my other uncle's um, uh, death, death time. You know, it helped me narrow it down. And I did that before the internet. So now you can kind of do it a lot easier, but it was all I had at the time is looking through this letter where my dad brother had just made this offhand reference to it another Question. thing yeah oh. um so that screen share where it's the letter the envelope and the newspaper clipping where are you archiving this okay that's a good question i'll show you in a minute i will answer okay. that but I will, okay. I, i'll pull it up and i will show you how it looks so, cause that is, that is a very legitimately needing to do question. So my father, and you guys have heard this story, came to Ohio um, as a married man after World War II and his wife came from Ohio and came to the Monterey County area, which is where my dad was. He came here because he was demobbed at Angel Island up in San Francisco. And he stayed in this area because his wife that he had been married to for a couple of years and had a child with, had come to live in Fort Ord with her mom. So when she came here, um, my dad tried to get back with his wife. And what, and there was all this drama that nobody told me anything. And I eventually we found out that there was another child born that my that his wife had had a child from some soldier somewhere and given up the child for adoption in Watsonville. And my dad had no clue about it. And he finally just said, you know, we can't get back together again, you know, that kind of thing. So my so years later, my dad meets my mom and he goes up to Reno and lives there for a bunch of weeks so he can get a divorce. He didn't really know where his wife was living. So uh, he had to he had to be a resident in Ohio. I mean, in, in Reno for a while. So this is all really interesting, you know, things to me. But I found a letter that my that his first wife, her name is Dale, had written to my dad. And it's basically, you know, it's just, oh, my gosh, she's saying, you know, you can't have our daughter. Um, if you take her away from me, I'll kill myself and I'll kill her kind of thing. And it was just this huge thing, you know, and that's why my dad never went to find his true daughter in Ohio, because this woman was off a rocker and she was, I don't know, I, it's a different world now. I would have gone and got my daughter, but <laughs> it was a different world, 1945 or so. So anyway, so here's this letter and it is fading and it's, it's in cursive and it's on like five different pieces of paper front and back, which makes it harder to read because, you know, the ink marks and stuff. So I just, I had, I'll show you really quickly. I transcribed it so that I would have the dang thing so that it's there for other people to know this is the history of our family 
And uh, I like how she's written the word hell in all caps and underlined it, but I still have the scans of the document, but I also have a transcript. And that's one of the things I wanna do sometime soon is to sit down with all these letter, transcribe it, put it on a Word document and save it so that it's searchable, which I'm not gonna go into detail right now, but so it's at least done. So somebody has this information because it's important information. At least it was in my family. And Question. If I could mm -hmm. interject. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. When um, you say you transcribed it, do you just have the letter and you made a Word document? Okay. Yeah, that's all I did. There's other ways of doing it. AI is getting much more sophisticated where you'll be able to say it and it'll transcribe it. There's a lot of ways of doing that, but um, I didn't do it. I just, I just typed it out. Okay. So I was going to say, uh, Susan, you bring up about transcribing. The process of doing that slows you down to read the document even closer oh, and yeah. better. And sometimes you know, you things you didn't, you know, you would have skimmed over or didn't absolutely. Like so that I very good point. And that, and I'm going to bring that up here again. Remind me if I don't bring that up again, because I, I have that as well. I was going to tell you. Okay. Another thing I wanted to do is I could not find my, uh, here's another document that I found whenever I was on a Facebook group. Remember I told you for these people who don't speak English, try to find a uh, Facebook group where that's doing genealogy for whatever language that you're interested in. And they may have access to newspapers or documents in other languages that you aren't uh, familiar with. And this one, um, and, and they were able to help me with a, a, a Slovenian um, article about my uncle, my great uncle being really upset that his, his ward, my aunt had married at 16 and that uh, the priest was just one in his $5 and that anybody could come off the street and marry a girl if he had $5. It was a really interesting article. It was in Slovenian. I had to have somebody translate it, but they found it for me. But it, I mean, that was like, oh, this is good stuff, you know? So here's another thing that I found by using newspapers.com. I forgot to show it to you. It is my grandmother, Mary Gerbig. Can you Remember make it I, bigger? Yeah. So what I was saying is, oops. So as I was saying is, you don't know what you're going to find in these articles, but this was, and I said that like, um, Newspapers were the Facebook of the time. So this was uh, information about her son, Private Victor R. Gerbic, who was 28 years old, and this is the address they lived at, how he had entered the army in 1941. He left forever. So it's a little information. And he has a brother named Anton. No, his brother's name is Anthony. That's my dad serving with the CB somewhere in the Philippines. So this little bit of information, there's a lot of information on this newspaper clipping, not only how old this Victor was, and it gives me an address, it gives me his middle initial. Yeah. No, no, that's Ohio, sorry. Oh. Um, it gives me where they worked at the Euclid Electric yeah. Company. It talks about my dad who's, uh, in the CBs and the, it's just a, a ton of information. It says he was wounded, so that that's information I didn't know, and you know how accurate it is. I don't know because it's the newspaper clipping that um, was there. Let's see. I showed you that. I showed you that. Okay, so I had this uncle named John. Never married. Didn't know anything about him um, except I knew he existed. So I went and years ago I found his. Um, a way of ordering his his records, his service records. Let me show you a picture. And I'm, I don't know if you're going to be all that. Curious. Did you have to pay? Yeah, I think so. But I really wanted to have some information, so I'm not going to blow it up in too big because it's not that interesting. But it was just a. Now you can fill these out with um, online. But this there was a way of asking for his records. And this I is had a, DD two fourteen. It, it said on the bottom. Oh, did it? I thought. No, but it, what you got was the DD-214? Oh, well, I'm going to show you. <laughs> so, Which um, war are we talking? Mm -hmm. Which war are we one, talking? One. Okay. World War One. So now these are probably all on, um, I'll show you here. These are probably all now on online, but this is what I got. Huh. And they sent me this. 
I don't know what it's called. Maybe there's another paper. But it explains, you know, when they came in, you know, he's a private, he had marksmanship, blah, blah, blah. And then it talks about the different battles he fought in in 1918 yeah. wow. and uh, where he was, at what time, wounds. These are just different initials of the people who were his, his, um, his bosses, I guess. Now, this caught my eye, this A wall down here. <gasps> We all know what AWOL means. <laughs> oh, and, just and, over New Year's, two days over New Year's. Give them a break. And so I went through <laughs> and I was looking at this and I found they had a whole bunch of stuff in here about battles. It was typed out. And I guess it's on the other paper, but it talked about all the different, I, yeah, I think I only made a copy of one. So it, it gave me all the days that he was AWOL. Wow. So I thought, oh, I wonder what that looks like. <laughs> so I went over and I made a map a calendar of 19, 17, 18, and 19, and I plotted it out. And so here he is in New York in September 21st. And then here he is in November, he was AWOL from the 18th to the 20th. And then here again is his 21st birthday on the 29th of December. And then he's AWOL <laughs> here. I thought, okay, got it. So not only is it uh, New Year's, but it's also his birthday. And then I went to 1918 and did the same darn thing. He was AWOL at the beginning of the year on the first. <laughs> and then he was gray. AWOL all this month of April. Oh. And then he was, uh, and then it shows he ships out. And on July 17th, he's in this place in Belgium. And all the yellow shows where he was in Belgium. And, he, he, and then that's the fifth is when he left, I guess. And then here on the 29th, he's at the Hindenburg Line. And you know, to people who are really into history of the war, I guess this would be extremely interesting. It's not super. I'm more interested in why he went AWOL than <laughs> oh, yeah, he was in one battle. Was like on the seventh, he was in one place. The eighth, he was in some place. Ninth, he was in some place. Wow. And then here's another place. And then here's where World War One ends on November 11th. And then he's still in the military because his discharge papers show that he doesn't leave until 2019. I mean, 1919, dude, geez, I'm, I'm off on a, who knows? Well, Mary, she's our military gal. Can you go AWOL all the time and not get booted out? In World War I, I guess. Well, if they <laughs> want yeah. about that, like now, like, yeah, because they really don't want to look for you. But back then, like, they came after you. I would think so, but, you know, who knows what, I don't know. No, and then he shows him, like you said, yeah. he was discharged in April of 1919. So I think this had a whole different eye of what his military life was like to me. You know, so I was like, oh, this is interesting. You know, that's interesting, Susan, because I have all my great uncle's World War One stuff and all the photographs he sent back. But if I if I ordered his history, his military record. I would be able to plot like where those places were and where he was going. That'd yeah, exactly be, like yeah. I did. And I thought it was yeah. interesting to put on a on a calendar of that yeah, time. That was helpful. Because it just gives you a, I don't know, just a different visual of how much time is spent. And he's probably just sitting around a camp playing cards or who knows what he's doing all that time. So um, oh, I wanted to show you one more of these. This is another SS5 form that I received. Remember, I said I ordered a whole bunch. And this one has is for my Uncle Victor, let me see if I can blow that in. Oops, it doesn't want to blow it. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this is, again, it's in his handwriting. And another spelling of Skufska. Yeah, S-C-H-O-O-F-S-A, whatever that is. Jeez. And he, he using his name is Vincent Gerbic. And I think his last name, I think his name is Victor Rudolph. So I don't know where he got Vincent. <laughs> But he's apparently got it. And look at how some is handwriting and some is print. Yeah. 1937. Here's his, here's his um, signature. V-I-C-T-O-R, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. They called him Vinko. So he wasn't really well ed educated. This, this is a, um, a very how's poor he, time. He you? How's he? How's he? My dad's brother. Okay. He's like three years older than my dad. But okay. he was not right that's how we always put it he wasn't always quite right <laughs> then the war didn't help any special yeah he was a little little odd um i believe the term is touched <laughs> touched he was a bit touched <laughs> he smoked and he drank and he bowled and 
my mom wasn't having any of it. And he came to live with us for a while and, and my mom wasn't having anything of it. It was really funny. Um, so she was like, when is he going home? <laughs> when is he going home? So I guess my dad had to tell him, uh, you overstayed your welcome. Uh, I think I have like three more things to show you. Okay, so, oh, and then the two things I said I would show you also. So when I went to Ohio when I was 30, I didn't know anybody. I just had written to people actual letters back and forth. And a couple of people were a little suspicious about who in the heck I was because they didn't know my dad. They didn't know that they had younger siblings, my uncle, Victor, and my dad, Tony. They didn't know about those people. So they didn't know there was a second marriage of their grandfather. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know. And all the people I went back to see, they were very welcoming once I got there, but they were in their seventies and I was 30 and we're first cousins. So it was kind of awkward and odd, but I'm pushy and I'm a kind of a, one of those people. I sat down with everybody I possibly could and I made them tell me a story. And so I, tra I didn't have audio or anything like that, but I transcribed it. So I transcribed it and I journaled it and typed it all out and I added photos. And then my dad also left me the family memories. He had, when computers were just being invented before we had spell check and all that, he had written all his memories and they're maybe a little embellished, but I have them. So I went through and I wrote out a, um, I took some excerpts of his, of his writing and I put it on, I kind of journaled it. And this is all about what my dad's life was being as a, in high school, what it was like. And then I went to Ohio when I was in Ohio, I drove by the high school and took a picture because we didn't have Google view at that time. So I, I, I just made like a visual. Here's the story my dad told us about the school. Here's a picture of the school. And then I went and I did meet up with his, one of his best friends when he was growing up and her name is Dorothy Eichhorn. And I went and I had lunch with her. Here she is sitting at her table. Here's a little house. And then she told me a story about my dad. And she told me about how my dad, when he got married and his mom peed herself at the wedding, she was a she was, I guess, drank a lot. And so my dad had to go and take her home and change her clothes and come back to the wedding. <laughs> and the neighborhood nicknamed my my dad, Guyumalable. I don't have no idea how to say it. G-U-G-Y-U-M-B-A-L-O. -G -G that was my dad's nickname. And he was always running everywhere he could go, as fast as he could go. And so she's telling this story about my dad and what he was like. And that's really important to me because when I was the youngest child of, this, of my dad. And as being the youngest child, my dad was already 45 when I was born. So by the time I was a teenager, my dad was in his 60s. So he had a back problem, he had legs problem, he walked with a cane, he had a wheelchair. So wow. I couldn't even envision my father running. That was, that was crazy talk. So to hear these stories from this woman who was a family friend talking about my dad was really important. And you know, these are all people are all dead now. So I got it when I could. And that was, you know, I make sure I kept, I kept that. And I have those, everything that I have is scanned on hard drives and I also put it up in a cloud source. Okay, so let me show you one last thing before I get to the other stuff. And I think I showed you this before. And as you know, I'm really hugely into photos. So when you find a photo, um, and this is my mom's side, let me show, I think I shared you this. I found this photo, it was a little tiny snapshot about four inches by three inches. I scanned it in. It's really horrible. You can't really picture. make out the people's faces very well, but I cleaned it up. I did color correct it and remove some of the dust from it. So it's a little bit easier to see these people's faces. But what I did is, um, you know, that that's wonderful. But my aunt who gave me this picture had, give, had given it to me with a list of who's in the picture. Wow. But she had written it in handwriting, right? And <laughs> so I wasn't quite sure who, what, how to spell some of these names, but I, I you know, I'd never heard of half of them. Lockie, L-O-C-K-I-E, or is that E-E? -E? I didn't know, you know, so I'm looking these up. Here's somebody's name is Please, P-L-E-A-S. That was a family name too. Leaman. wow, these are crazy names. Ver, Ver, 
V E R S E V E R I E. I don't know what verily. I'm not quite sure. Here's this. What is what the heck is this letter? Is that an E? Is that a V? Is it a G? I think it's Ivanda. Ivanda. What the hell is a name like Ivanda? So anyway, so I, you know, I'm thinking, okay, so now I know who these people are, but it still didn't make any sense to me because it was a really, I don't know, it just it didn't make sense because there's also a couple on there with the same name so what I did and I'm going to show you what I did just because I'm one of these weird people is I went and I think I've shown you this before is I made a copy of the picture and I numbered the people so I started out with the youngest down here which is according to the picture and then I went through and I just put numbers on them and I found out that there was one number that wasn't on the back of the picture. So she had, there's 23 people in this picture, but there was 22 names on the back of the picture. <laughs> that was one of the things I discovered. But I went through and I put the numbers on them and trial and error and a lot of work on ancestry, I was able to figure out who every one of these people are. It, and we had a little class, we talked about it once before. And are they all related? Yeah, it's all related. Some are brother-in-laws. So they're by marriage in some cases. Yeah. But I was able to use their pictures on Ancestry whenever I put them into my Ancestry. You know, I zoomed in, it's kind of blurry, but I have a picture of this person in Ancestry. And then I made a sheet of paper that had the names matching up to the numbers. So I had it in a place. Remember, we don't know that we're gonna be doing all the genealogy in the future. We may have to hand this over to somebody. So you wanna make sure you think it through that somebody else may end up having to take over where you left off. and if you've got it clearly written what it is that you're doing, then you'll probably be have a better, better um, uh, uh, chance. Okay, so I'm gonna show you those two things that you asked me to do. Wait, before you leave that, you, yeah. you have the date of that picture? Yeah, I was able to date that picture. And the way I dated that picture was the youngest child was an infant. And I found out what the birth of that child was. And I was a baby photographer for 34 years. So I can look at a child and I can tell you that child is eight months old. That child's yeah. five months old. Look at the way they're able to hold their head. So I can get it really close because that's what I did. So that's how I dated it is by going to the youngest child in the photo and saying, well, that's it. And then Tamberly has uh, sent a couple pictures to her daughter, who's an um, expert at clothing uh, era costume. And so in a couple of cases, she looked at the picture and she was able to kind of give me a date range. Yeah. That's probably there. And I know my family wasn't sophisticated at all. So, so I could see that this is dirt for people, very, very poor. So the clothes they're wearing were not in fashion at the time. Right. <laughs> so I think they're wearing some outfits that look like they might be from the twenties, but I think the picture was 27. So, um, okay, here's something else I did. Remember I told you, I did a article just about, I, I took all the Gerbic research I'd done and I wrote it into a, a, like a four page thing. Here's the family history. Three brothers come to United States, Thomas, Anton, and Frank. Here's what happened to those families. Here's all I know. And I didn't give them documents. I didn't give them pictures. I just gave them like a rundown. And I sent it to a bunch of people over Thanksgiving on Facebook that I knew that were Gerbics. And I, uh, what I did is I said, hey, would you like this information? I will send it to you. And I sent it out to about 12 people and probably seven or eight people wrote back and said, yeah, I'd be interested in reading that. Huh. And a couple of people said, that was very interesting. But, you know, it didn't go any further than that. But my brother, my sister, I gave them a copy and they said, you know, oh, this kind of jives with some of the history I've known, you know, and things like that. So what I decided to do, and this is really ridiculous, really over the top. I made a Facebook group just in case people got interested. We could all discuss the family documents <laughs> and stuff, which isn't going to happen. But I made this Facebook group and I'm going to just run through it really quick. I'm the only member of this group. But what it did is exactly what Cindy told me, just said, it forces you to look at the document in a new way and really look at it. 
because as I put this together, I was writing it for some theoretical, some person in the future who's going to be so excited about learning about all this. It's going to come over and say, Susan, of course I want to be in the group. Let me look at all your documents and let's analyze them together over Zoom. And oh my gosh, this is amazing. For that person, that isn't going to ever happen. But I made it for them and I thought it through. And as I was putting it down, I, I put every damn document I had on each family member and I came up with a naming, a, a numbering system. So here's what I did. This is the area where my family's from. This is the Facebook cover. And the story I'm going to tell in this group was about Matthew and Ursula and their three boys. Let me, I, don't mm -hmm. know, I don't know how to make this bigger, but I put the years. And so I put that on the cover photo so you can't miss it. That's all we're talking about. Wait, then, what happened to Victor? Why isn't he on there? Oh, because he's not he's not one of the three brothers who came from from um, okay. this this and this Frank right here is my dad's father. So my dad was a generation behind this. So he's not part of the story. The story I'm I wanted to tell people was about these three brothers and what happened to their oh, family. Oh, oh, oh. So, yeah. So this is Thomas, this is Frank. My I'm descended from Frank and then Anton. Anton. So, so that's all the story was I was telling. Then I went and I took and I made an album. Let me see. And I put everything in the album that I had. And Facebook has some different things. And I uploaded all these documents and all these photos I had for this hypothetical future person who's going to be so excited about seeing family pictures that they've never seen before, right? What a um, gold mine for somebody who's researching this. Yeah. Where in the hell are they? But <laughs> no, they're not there. And I put, I put uh, documents. I put death certificates. I put the SS5. I put uh, stories. This one right here is a story that somebody told me about their father who's now dead. This little boy, I interviewed this little boy about his dad. So he tells a story about his dad, you know? Aww. And so I wrote it all out. Here's a picture of the grave. Here's, you know, so when I went back to Ohio, I took pictures of every picture I could find. So when I went and met with these people, they had pictures. I'm like, I just took my camera out and took pictures of it. It was, you know, before iPhones and all that. This is a film camera you're doing this with? Wow. Well, I was a yeah, photographer. Well, that's yeah, impressive. So film cameras, are, I was totally comfortable with that. So what I did, and this is going to sound really, really weird, but I was, there's so many Anthony's, and there's so many Tony's, and there's so many of these people that it was just getting so confusing that I went and I made, um, uh, let's see, I should have had this pulled up for you. I, accounts. I found a spreadsheet. I made a spreadsheet of like a a key. Let me pull it up real quick. So you can, um, I should have had that handy. Dang. You know, I, I, I know somebody maybe who could look out of the blue, your dad's first, what the, the daughter he had with the first wife. Well, she's dead. Her children. She had no children. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, so, well, it's a long story, lots of drama, but I did know her and I went back and visited her several times because oh. we finally found her. She wrote to my dad. But anyway, so, and I have all the letters she wrote to my dad, which is really cool. She had a horrible, horrible life, just oh. awful life. Um, if my mom and dad had known, it would be different, I hope. Mm. Ah, I'm trying to think. I had, a, I had a, okay, I think it's under, I have a, I have a file for genealogy. That's where it is. there so i decided to rename all my family members and to always use the same naming um always use the same naming and what i did is i used the year of their birth and then their name and it's all one word so it's and it's 1864 anton or frank and the 1863 Thomas, and I pay. I did like that. I didn't make the whole name. I didn't use the last That's name. That's so smart. That. Well, because I have so many Anthony's and so many Tonys <laughs> and so many Franks and so many Thomases that it was just ridiculous to um, to to um, find all these people. So I I I just came up with that. So when I was doing the the Facebook stuff, and you'll see right here, share. Over here, you can see 
that I use that naming, like I wrote down what it is. This is the third child of so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so, and then I put Ruth, 1923. Okay, I put the name and then I put the year. And then James, 1940, Cat, uh, Geraldine, 1925. So that when, if I wanted to search, I'd be able to just type their first name and then the uh, year and I would pull up the right person. Because it was just, it was like I said, it was becoming too much. And I made a key and for some reason I am not finding where I did it because I just did it the other day. I had it on my screen and I, was, and I thought I bookmarked it, but of course, no, I didn't do it, but it is here and I will find it. So I'm gonna move on to the last thing, which was um, that when I was putting all this information in the computer into Facebook for this theoretical person who's gonna help me, I was able to find that I was really looking at the death certificates and every certificate. And I said to myself, what information is on this document? And one of the things I found with the Thomas, at least, is that um, his daughter married a guy who moved to Michigan and died. And we don't have anybody who moved to Michigan or anything like that. And he, he was like 30 years old. So what the heck is he dying? So when I read the death certificate, I saw he died of a tumor, a brain tumor. And then I looked into a little further and it said he'd had, has he had surgery before? And it said, yes, in Ohio and a year before. So apparently this guy had had a brain tumor. He'd had surgery somewhere in Ohio. And then a year later, he moves to Michigan to get more work. And then he has a, a relapse and dies. So that was a lot more interesting than just Here's this guy in a, uh, moved to Michigan and he dies of brain tumor. So it was, it was like, it feels like there's some drama. You understand how stressful that must have been. Um, you know, all, all, the, all the problems that would happen from that. Where in Michigan did he go? Camp. To where? Camp, Camp Creek. Well, there's like, Kent County. There's. It was a city. I, I can't remember right now. I have it somewhere. Battle Creek. Battle Creek? No, it was Camp. Oh. Camp okay. Creek or Camp something. I can't remember, but it was, okay. it, it, and he's not my blood relative. He was right. the You're husband in. of somebody. I'm so, like, okay, so the last two things I wanted to show you were the Google documents and the how I sort the photos and how I save them. Does anybody have any questions before I go to those two things? Okay. I, you've done a great job of introducing lots of things very well. It's probably going to be a little much. Okay, so let me try to hurry up and finish this because it's three. So we're okay, here, I think. I mean, well, if Mary has to go, she has to go. Yeah, we will. We will. And it's I'm recording it. So Unless somebody else is making dinner. You don't be late. Yeah, <laughs> Thursday's dinner made by somebody else day. So Sean learned how to cook. You gotta, you gotta find a way of, of organizing yourself. So you've got to think about how what works best for you and using the tools that you use best and you want to try to put it in the in a way that it's saved so that you can find it again and so that other people who may take over after you will have access to it i remember cindy saying you know we we always have to update to the newest technology so where we used to keep it on floppy disks and then you put it on dvds then you put it from dvds onto something else and cds and you always want to make sure it's it's to the next level technology wise, because, um, you know, things become obsolete so quickly now. So whatever you're comfortable with, think about how you want to organize it so you can find it, but then again, leave a key so other people are able to, to, to use it and access it. So I use Google spreadsheets because with my Wikipedia work, the groups I use, we use a lot of spreadsheets, uh, Google spreadsheets, because they're free. You do have to have the internet. And they are, um, it's like Excel, but it's for, it's a lower level. So it doesn't have as many bells and whistles, which you really don't need. So this is kind of a quick overview of, of Google spreadsheets. And there's Google Word, and there's Google PowerPoint and other things, and they're free. So here's a Google spreadsheet. When you get a Google spreadsheet, it's gonna be blank. And um, let me see if I can just pull up. I can just do this, file, new, spreadsheet. So here's a blank spreadsheet. And when you get it, it's just blank. 
So what you can do is you can title it up here and there's all sorts of different tutorials on how to do this. And I'm happy to help you if you want to use this. I will spend time showing you how to do all these little things. There's a lot of things I've learned. You got your- Okay, wait, you go to your browser and put in Google spreadsheet to get it to open You go it. to Google, google.com uh -huh. and, and there should be um, probably a, um, let me go back. There should probably be up here in the corner, in the right-hand corner with all those little dots are. Yeah. There are all these things you can do. And uh, okay. YouTube and all kinds of stuff. And they have sheets. So if you click on sheets, that should bring oh. you to the, to uh, making, start a new spreadsheet. And there's hints, like here's calendars, um, all kinds of different things like that. Ah, here, who is who? So there's all kinds of spreadsheet. Here's my little cheat sheet. So I, so this is a good example. So you can make these categories anything you want, these columns, and you just stretch them out by moving your mouse over. And then you get this little double arrow and you can move it over. So you can make them as wide as you want them to be. Cool. So, um, and you can center things. I mean, it's, it's like, um, like I said, I'd spend some time working with you if you want to do this. But I, I made the first column the year, and then the second column is the person's name. And then the code name is the third column, like <laughs> Anton 1870, Katie 1868, Frank 1864. So this way I have a key. And then I explained over here in the notes section, how it is, who are they? So somebody be able to read it and they say, husband of Mary 1894, who is father of Tom 1822, 1922 and Charles 1927 he died of a uh, brain tumor in Michigan so I can keep adding new people down here you know wherever I want what, what's the la la heading on that last column what'd you call it this notes. One? notes that one notes okay yeah you can do whatever you want and then when you if you want you can as you keep writing more people down here in this column down here if you want to sort it so that it's always the oldest person at the top, then you can click on the column. See how I've clicked on it? It's highlighted now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I go over here to tools. Oh, no, I go over to data and short sort sheet by column. And it's going to sort them by year because I told it to sort it by year. And it's a little more complicated than that. But what it does is it keeps it really organized so that as I keep adding new people onto my cheat sheet of who I'm collecting on family history. So I don't get so lost later. It's there. So I'm, I'm going to bookmark this. I forgot to bookmark it. So I'm going to bookmark it. I'm going to put it in my folder of genealogy, Gerbic genealogy. Let's see, I thought I'd bookmarked it. So now I can find this easily. So when you're, when you're working with a document like this, you can, you can make things so that, see how it's moving? And the, and the name up here at the top is not moving. See? No. See how it's blue at the top where it says birth year name, code name, notes? Yeah. And the people's names underneath are moving as I slide it back and forth. Okay. And your point the is columns are scrolling without affecting the titles. Right. So oh, which, okay. the reason why is because, and that's one of those things that's just so annoying is when you're when you have a lot of image, right, a lot of right, information on a thing. So there's going to know what it's for. The call. Yeah, so here, like right now, I've just unfrozen it. So now if I scroll, we're going to lose the heading. Got it. So what you do is you can oh. freeze these, these, um, you can freeze what you want so that now I can scroll and it always stays where I want it. Um, oh. This will make more sense if I was to like walk you through an actual document you wanted. And you can change the, the color. You can bold it. You can make... You can, it's really simple by just clicking on the little arrow to tell oh. you say what color do I want. I could I could go in through this and I could say, um, you know, I want to sort this by the three brothers. You know, one color will be um, orange, another color will be blue, and the other color will be green. And that way, I can see who the family members are. There's there's thousands of ways of doing this. So I'm going to go back to this one. So this is another one I've been working on. Because again, I have thousands of Tonys and Franks and, and Antoinettes and Tonys and oh my, my sister's name is Tony. My sister, 
No. <laughs> so there's too many. So yeah. what I did is I made a spreadsheet starting with the year and I use the same format each time with the year first. And even if I don't know the date, I'd put the year dash zero one dash zero one. So mm -hmm. that it always stay in the format because so I can so I can oh. sort this column. And then I made a column of things I need to find. And then I made a column of names and stuff like that. So anyway, what I put on this form is addresses. As I was looking through those SS5s and all that, I found addresses for people. Remember, I kept finding addresses and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to me because I'm not from Ohio, but I went and I put everything off of every document I found, every address, so that when I went and was looking into this, um, I, it would make it easier for me to, to, to sort. And I'll show you in a minute. I also like, see, this is something that I was questioning. So I made it a color that I'd notice. Oh. Um, you know, everybody's born, everybody dies, everybody, well, almost everybody got married. Some people had children. So it was, so I'd write down what it is I wanted to find and a year, I think it was. And then I'd write the word find because I know they got married. So there's gotta be a marriage certificate somewhere. So this is kind of like my to-do list. Okay. Now this is for one of those brothers. Oh, then, so wait. But the find so, is saying um, you estimate the marriage and now you know you have to find it. I, there's got to be a marriage. And then I'll make a note saying, I'm not guaranteeing it's this year, but I know it's probably close to that year because of right. the birth of the okay. other child. And then in this column right here, I put, how do I know what I know? That's excellent. And sometimes uh, it says I have the document. And sometimes it's because of the 1920 census or because uh, there was a letter my uncle wrote that said this or, you know, whatever. Why do I know what I know? How is it I know that? So these are just notes to myself. Then at the bottom of this, of this spreadsheet, you can see there's a plus, and it might be really hard for you to see, but in the very bottom left corner, there's a plus. And if you hit plus, it adds another tab. And let oh. me go to this one that I'm, this is a blank one. Uh, and down here at the bottom, it has, it says the word sheet one and there's a plus beside it. So I'm gonna hit the plus and now there's a sheet two. And then I'm gonna hit a plus and now there's a sheet three. And if you click on these tabs and you right click on it, you can change the color of the tab. So like maybe I'll make that one bright blue. See there's a little blue there. I'm gonna right click on the second one and I'm gonna make that color purple. And then I'm gonna right click on the third tab and I'm gonna make it, oops, I'm make it another color like um, here's red. And then if you click on it, it allows you to change the name. You can change the tab name. I can also rearrange these just by sliding them. So this is why I like Google spreadsheets, it's easy. Um, there's probably be like so many sophistications on Excel that I would be so lost. So you can, you can make these colors, whatever you want. You can title them, whatever you want. You can rearrange them. But so like this one right here, I'm on name. Let's say this is Tony's. I'm calling it Tony's or whatever. And then second one, I'm making Frank's. And the third one, I'm just going to make it Thomas. And that's, and so I can click on these things and it, you'll see that the, the name come, I'm pointing to it with my finger, like you can see me, you can see, and I can change these. So in other words, there's three different tabs with three different informations on the spreadsheet. It's all about my family. So if you look back on this one that I finished, I have a tab called Frank John Gerbic and it's bright red. And then next to it, I have Thomas Gerbic and it's got a blue. And then I have Anton and Anna, oops, and it's a different kind of blue. And then I have my other aunt, her name is Joanna Skuska, and I have a, a hot pink. And so on, I've got these information, all these documents I've collected. And, and then as I am concentrating on the family, you know, I think, oh, well, I need to find that marriage certificate. So it's probably right around here. So I'll make it a marriage certificate. Okay, so here's what, I showed you guys this a long time ago. Right. But let me show you just for the sake of it. So Frank, Thomas, and Anton are the three brothers who came from Slovenia. 
So I wanted to know how do their lives intermix in Ohio? How how did they, I know they're intermixing together in Ohio? They're in a little close Slovenian community, so they've got to have some interaction, right? So what I did is I made the I made each um, a color. So like I just went like this all the way to the bottom, and I made it a color. I just highlighted everything and I made it, let's make it a light uh, purple. So now everything on this paper, everything here is purple, right? Then I went over to Thomas and maybe I'll make everything a light blue. This is so easy to change that it's, it's not that big a deal. So here's a light blue. So then what I would do is I'd make another tab See, it says sheet eight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything here that's that's pink. I'm just gonna highlight, oops. I'm gonna highlight everything here in pink. And I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna paste it in this brand new tab I made by just pasting it. Oops, that was stupid. I have to come up and put my finger right where, where it is, where I want it to go and have to stretch these out, obviously. So now this is just a duplicate of what was there a minute ago. And then- Which, I, which brother's that? That's Frank. Okay. And I went over to Thomas, I made light blue. And then you copy everything here. Same thing, copy. And I go over to the same document that I just put all that purple at the bottom. Let's see if I did this right and just hit paste. So now uh, I've got this purple and I've got this blue, right? That means uh, that doesn't do anything for me. That's still not the aha. So since I have used the exact same columns on each of these tabs, they are identical. So I've used the same date format on both of them. So if I come up here to this column B that has all these dates in it, it has all the dates down here too. They're all highlighted, see that? Oh. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna sort it. Um, oh. She's getting it. So I'm gonna sort sheet <laughs> by column. So now what it did is it just blended the two, the blues and the, and the pinks together by date. So if I scroll through here, if it's red, that's Frank. If it's blue, that's Thomas. So now I can see a chronological order of where they were in time compared to each other. So if I go through, I can see, oh, well, here's the census, the 1900 census. This one's on Brooker and this one, I can't find the census record. It says find. So, um, you know, uh, and, and I goes, you just go down and you can see how the people are starting to interweave with each other a little bit by date, you can see how the children were born and the sequence they're born in. And this is how I figured out that my, that Thomas Gerbic was a relative because this right here, this is the thing that did it. This child for Thomas was born in 1894 at 39 Parker in Cleveland. And this child was born a few months later at 39 Parker in Cleveland. So this is the same address Two different brothers. Two different. Well, I didn't know. I'd never heard of Thomas before. Nobody's okay, heard of Thomas. Two different. Two different fathers. But they're bo born in this. They have the same name, Gerbic. Yeah. I know they're both in Ohio, and months apart, a child is born in the same household. So they must be brothers. Because remember, I finally figured it out yeah. using the documents, and I, I found an ancestor of Thomas's who told me that she's the, uh, that was descended from them. And then here I did the same thing and you could take the same brother, this is the third brother, do the same thing, copy it, go over to the sheet, come down to the bottom, go right underneath it, hit paste, and there's the yellow. And then again, come back up here and hit sort. So now I have the three brothers, all their history and how they're interwoven with each other. So you've got by date, so it would tell me 
the same kind of thing. I, I could expand this to make it easier to look at if I want. And it'll tell me, oh, here's the census and the 1900 census. Here's all the kids that are living on the census at 52 broker. Oh. And then here's the information in the notes. And then I can just go through. So it was just like a way of thinking it through in a different way. Okay, so that's Google Documents. I will, if you want to use Google Documents, I'm more than happy to show you how to use it. So let me go back to what um, Deirdre's question was. How do I do this? So I have a hard drive. Oh, come on. Come on, Gerbic. You can do this. A portable hard drive. Uh, I have a, yeah, I have a portable hard drive. I have several part hard drives because I'm worried something's going to happen to one of my hard drives. And uh, Gerbic, you can do this. You can do it. Why is it that it's whenever you're, you're thinking about it? I want to go to the, here, oops. Here it is. Okay, so it's called Passport because that's what the, the thing is that I'm using is called a Passport hard drive. And what I've done, let me blow this up, is on this, it's a four ter terabyte. So in other words, it holds a hell of a lot of stuff. Is uh, on the hard drive, I have made all these folders. Remember, Deirdre, you and I went through and how to make folders and how to put yeah. them in folders. Oh my gosh. So thanks. I've made everything by year. So 1930s, 1940s, 1942, oh. World War II, and so on. So um, I have everything in these folders and I have these folders in other places and other hard drives so that I have, and down here has some more miscellaneous stuff. Like I have, I even put my cross stitch uh, patterns and I've sorted them out and everything in here so that if I wanna, I got rid of all the magazines, but I scanned all the magazines first so that I can pull them up on my <laughs> screen and I have a whole shelf of stuff space now that I don't have to deal with. You can so, get therapy for that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Mark, would say, Mark would say they have a pill for that, but this way I can, I can browse through the magazines if I want and I don't have to have them on a shelf, which is kind of sad because I really liked it, but they were just taking up so much space. Uh, so I have all this on the hard drive too, uh, just in case. And I have, I have things in here that are so bizarre. Like I used, um, this is my dad. And I have, he had clippings that he just had clipped, just cartoons that he had clipped and they were just sitting in a book somewhere. And I guess this meant something to him. So I, I made a screenshot of every one of them. Oh, I can multiple. see all kinds of multiple uses for doing this. Yeah. Yeah, there might be, and some of them are cartoons and just newspaper clippings my dad had. Um, oh my gosh, my my house could look so different. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you scan it and you don't get rid of it till it's saved. And then, as I said, I kept copies of the handwriting and it was just stuff, you know, yeah. here's a home loan. They saved this piece of junk mail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever reason. Here's the semantics on how to use a computer, I guess. My brother had to, had built a computer for him, so he had to show him how to do it. So you have to you have to boot it up by hitting this prompt line and you have to hit the press, the return key, uh, and then dog. you go over to the enter yeah. key, and then you have the thermantic. I don't know what this means, but it's still, I wanted to save it and I saved it. So I have everything that they did. Here's where my dad was trying to learn another language and had written out the words. Actually, I think this is my mom's, but um, I anything that any scrap of paper, here's receipts from Sears and Roebuck. Here's some John. <laughs> Wait, does that say Roger Knopf? Yeah, it sure does. My Because oh, Roger okay. was a... a Roger was a photographer for a while and we had tons of scratch paper because no piece of paper in this household ever went yeah. unused. Uh, so in a way that's kind of even charming on its own. Yeah. So they had, they kept everything. I kept everything. Here's, here's the salute to the flag. <laughs> Pledge laws. And I guess they were taking in like a, a my dad was in the VA, VF, uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars. And so I guess he went and he made notes of how to, how to conduct the meetings. Just well, it seems reasonable. Here's a phone. I, I'm thank you, thank you for for recording this. My daughter's like, please, can you zoom and let me practice my physics presentation? Oh, oh okay, so you gotta okay. go. But, well, I'm basically done, but I'll, I'll finish up, and you can go ahead and go, and okay. I'll then I'll end the recording in the middle. Thank you, bye everybody. Bye, bye. Hi, say hello. To, is it Mariah? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, tell her good work, record for her grandma. And you too, Deirdre, you got to tell your stories too. Okay. Don't make me come after you. Okay, so that was pretty much it, is that I have everything. It took me years, you guys. This isn't like a little project that I... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uploading all the photos i it's been years and and to go through every item and and uh try to find a year for it by looking at the postmarks on it because everything's sorted by year oh i yeah i guess i show you this last little thing hold on a second everything is sorted by year but i have them in folders oh, one more time um by, okay, here's a random year, 1996. So everything is in folders by date if I have it. Here's a here's a book that my um, my that uh, kids at the Fremont Elementary School had created for me as a thank you, and they all made little like um, like thank you for for this. And they drew little pictures and stuff like that. So I scanned that all in and I put it under the 1996. 02. So I file it like this. So it says 02, 01 in the year. So that way all the folders are in, in order. And then I have an area that says uh, letters and cards. And so if I open this up, this is every postcard, every pitch, every letter that we've ever received with their envelopes. To who? All, your whole family? Anybody that left an envelope somewhere in my household. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I mean, your mother, your father, you guys, your sons. Like, yes, anything okay. like that. And the way our scanning program is, it's sometimes if you scan them, it doesn't scan to the edge. It mm -hmm. kind of cuts off the edge because it's white. So what I did is I put a piece of colored paper behind it when I scanned mm -hmm. it so that it would have an ed it would scan to the edge. And these are letters and I've got to, trans I've got to go through and transcribe them because they're going to be really hard to, to read mm -hmm. later. And whenever I... Um, when I, when I saved them, I tried to find the date. Like this goes with this. So this is February 1st, 1996, Emil Dell. And so these two go together. So I saved them with the same file name. So they'd always remain together. Right. So, because you can get multi-page um, things. And also I've always had this habit of sending postcards to myself when I travel. And my sister also sends postcards to my mom. So you can see this is a postcard my mom's received from my sister and there's the front of it, you know? And so here's another one from my sister to my mom. So I saved everything. And when I travel, I always take a, I make postcards and send them to myself as like a journal, like here I am traveling, you know, in so-and-so and the weather was really great. And we saw this movie and whatever. But every single document is here. Um, every card that anybody's ever given me, every <laughs> letter anybody's ever given me or my family is in these files. And then I have another file that's called receipts and et cetera. And this is just crazy stuff. You never know what you're going to find. I told you my parents had all these obituaries and stuff. I have no idea who Emma Stingleberry is. Uh, she died in 1996, but my mom saved her clipping. It's probably somebody from her church. And then my mom went to a funeral and she saved the little funeral card. Here's somebody I have no idea who they are, their anniversary. My mom saved their thing. My mom clipped this out of the paper. I have no idea why, but it's Emil Dell. So this is a relative. So when I go back and finally spend some time with each of these documents, I'll be able to use this on our family history thing. I can say, you know, newspaper. Oh, look, here's <laughs> talk about Stu. Crazy. This is Sterling writing his name with his left hand and with his right hand at five years old in April 11th, 1996. Well, no, what I'm impressed with is that he would even consider that something to do. Like, who knows why I did it. But it's Sterling, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love that. August. August 6, 1996. <laughs> I will not steal anything again. I will not steal anything. <laughs> This was Caspian's punishment. He did something, probably ice cream. <laughs> I made him write this out and I found it. She saved it and I've got it. <laughs> oh, so we have some blackmail. <laughs> I have everything. So I'm not kidding. I took just boxes. That's huge what you everything. got rid of though. 
I mean, that's huge, the amount of paper that you moved out. And I didn't destroy any piece of paper until I knew that I had it, it was saved, I looked at it, it copied okay, and, and then um, it was stored on a cloud somewhere. Because I was terrified somebody's gonna break into my house and steal my hard drive and then it's gone. How many hours a night do you get of sleep? I get four eight hours sleep. Four I don't I don't do things like normal people. I don't watch TV yeah. that much. We did watch The Crown and we did watch The Queen's Gamut. So we did watch those. The Queen's Runter. Gamut was wonderful. That was yeah. really good. Yeah. So I don't I don't do it. I'm not a I don't clean like people do <laughs> and I don't cook. So I've got more free time to do stuff. And I guess it's a bit obsessive, but I've, I've channeled it into a positive. The problem is I have no <laughs> grandkids. So this is gonna go to nobody, um, you know. But it's all right at your fingertips when you start yes, researching everything stuff. is at yeah. my fingertips. And it's just been an obsession I've always had. And my kids too. And, and if I look back on all the things I've scanned, I can see my mom, and my dad also made lists and, yeah. and, you know, everything. And they saved everything just like I did. And there's lists of stuff, you know, like um, books of the Bible. You'll see them just writing yeah. the books of the Bible or just, just things. And then I look at my kids' documents that they've saved. They did the same darn thing. They made lists and they, and it was okay. trivial list taking and saving everything. And I don't want to become a hoarder. So <laughs> I don't want to get rid of it. But then I took all the documents and when, when, the, when the time is up free and we can actually come to people's houses again, um, I can show you, I have tubs of Tupperware under the big things, those plastic bins and with plastic bags and all the letters that I have are in each little individual holder and a thing. And I've only got like four tubs. I've, I, made, I was able to get rid of all this and condense yeah. it down into like four tubs that are about, I don't know, yay big. They're not that much. And all the pictures are in there too, and and so on, so that it's it's condensable. But if if there was not, a fire, not there's a rush, it's I'd have everything. Yeah, because that's kind of my paranoia. Now so you're an archivist. In a way, yeah. yeah. I, I have another archive project I want to do someday. A friend of mine has every document of this famous um, magician and uh, illusionist. It's in the storage locker up in Oregon and the pandemic happened. So uh, now that I'm kind of done with my project, I will be able to do that. Mark's, I've been scanning everything he had. He has all these um, scrapbooks from high school and art college, he went to art college and all these scrapbooks of drawings that he did. And yeah. so we're gonna scan, I've scanned a lot of them in and then we'll scan even the rest. But some of them are really big format. So he, we're gonna have to go to Kinko's or that place that makes copies of your, um, does uh, blueprints? I learned yeah. they can scan. How, how big a format? Blueprints. Oh, the, big stuff. Yeah. Yeah, a huge thing. Yeah. So they can make copies of that for you, and um, so so they're sitting in a pile waiting to be done. But I'm almost done. It took, like I said, it took years, but really just the hard part is thinking through how you're going to organize it, how yeah. you're going to make sure you don't duplicate yourself, and so you can find it. Yeah, you got to put it in the same naming convention and, and stick with it because otherwise it's going to be too hard. So uh, so the way I did it is like like the lady whose name is Emil, E-M-I-L, I have it set up so I can, I always called her Emil, always. And so if I'm looking for letters from Emil, I'll be able to put in the search Emil and yeah. all of the things will come up that I've, that I've saved as the name Emil. And it, it, that way I can see a correspondence between my mom and her over you time. You really have to get your titling down. That's why yeah. I use the spreadsheets that say, here's the key. Here's what everybody's called. And you open up the spreadsheet and it's nice having a second screen because you have that open and on the other screen, you're doing your work. And every time you come across a new name, you're like, oh gee, I better put that brother-in-law in here somewhere. Yeah. I'm going to call him so-and-so and he put it on your cheat sheet and in like I said like the same formatting same style so that way you can always go back and and um when you're using the same name instead of coming up with Tony deciding a different one yeah so like I used my dad's initials because he used his initials AJG a lot so 
I try to use that format in a lot of places too. So it's always AJG, AJG. And I always know that's my dad. And then whoever comes after me will be able to figure that pretty easily. If anybody comes after yeah. me, it'll be easy. Anyway, so any questions? We lost Cindy. We broke Cindy. She just stepped out for a second. Okay. So